my lovelies. Welcome back to Crazy But Not Dangerous. I'm Shorty Vaughn. These are my big, bountiful basket bananas. That's a mouthful. Anyhow, and I guess they would be too. Um, we got lots of bananas in our bountiful basket, so we're going to do all things bananas today. We're going to do one of my favorite recipes. This was something that my dad made all the time. You may have had it. You may have made it, but a banana pudding. And we're putting a little bit of a twist on it today because as my dad would make it bananas, vanilla pudding, vanilla wafers, little Cool Whip on top, never hurt anybody. Um, I do not have vanilla wafers and I'm not going to the store. But what I do have is some lovely Girl Scout shortbread cookies. I'll show you the box. I bought these from my little niece Libby. Um, she's a Girl Scout, like to support her, like to support the Girl Scouts, and these are just the shortbreads. I bought these because I knew that there would be a lot of applications for them besides just eating them right from the box. They're delicious, but they are going to replace my vanilla wafers in my banana pudding. I think this is a good idea because these are more substantial than the vanilla wafers. So I think they can hold up to the moisture better than the vanilla wafers. You got vanilla wafers, you like vanilla wafers better, you do you. But I'm not going to the store. I'm saving money because I'm using something that I already have. I supported the Girl Scouts, love the Girl Scouts. I was never a Girl Scout, um, but I was a missionette through the Assembly of God Church. And that was super fun. Girl Scouts is super fun, so glad to support them and making my dad's recipe. So a little bit of nostalgia because, you know, he's been gone a long time now. I miss him. And uh, just, just a little just a little way for me to keep on keeping on. The thing that we're gonna do with our bananas is we're gonna make frozen chocolate um, bananas. So I've, I've got the video. It's gonna be the last part of the video. And we're just gonna go ahead and freeze these bananas, um, make them super convenient. And I'm actually going to break the banana up into three pieces because these are so large. If you don't have that size of banana, you know, maybe you cut them in half. Maybe you put them on the stick hole. I don't care how you do it. Just get there if you can. Anyhow, we are going to be at 96 degrees here in Phoenix on Easter. That's hot. No matter where you're at. And I'm a cheapskate and I won't turn the air conditioning on until we reach consistent 100 degree weather. I'd like to try to get through the entire month of April, maybe even into May if I can. We'll see what happens. Um, but we'll need a little cool treat to kind of keep us comfortable through the heat wave. Maybe it'll cool down after Easter. Who knows? Um, but I'm going to try to get all the way through May if I can. You know it. Because my electric bill in the summertime is high. Super high. Let's get to it. Let's tear it up. So we're just going to follow the directions on the back of our cook and serve jello pudding. I like cook and serve because I think it goes together. It combines much more evenly and has a smoother taste. So I'm pouring out three cups of whole milk. You use whatever kind of milk you like. We pretty much only drink whole milk. It says to cook it over medium heat. So I'm turning it to a five. I'm going to pour my milk in and get every last drop of that out. I got it on sale for $2.77. Yay, great. Open up my box of Jell-O Cook and Stir Pudding. You could use instant if that's what you have. Like I said, I got this at the dollar store. I wasn't mad at it. It was a dollar. It was a full size. That's for me. We'll just pour this right in on top. Now, if you have a super delicious custard recipe that you want to use and you don't have a dollar store box of pudding, you go right on ahead and make your custard. I'm just taking the quick, easy way out, so to speak. So, it says stir until boiling consistently. So, I'm going to go with one hand and then we're going to change over 
and use the other hand so that we don't get all worn out. And this makes six one half cup servings. Yay, hooray. So that's quite a bit of dessert. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and bring this to a boil, allow it to boil um, till it thickens. I'm going to take it off the heat and then I'm just going to go ahead and cover it with something so that nothing gets inside of it and then go ahead and let that come to room temperature so I can assemble my banana pudding because I don't want the hot um, pudding mixture to cook my bananas. I don't think they need any cooking. So, yep, we're just going to stir this. You could use fat-free milk. Um, I'm sure it would work just fine. I never have because I don't think I've ever bought fat-free milk. So, it's funny because I was just thinking about Easter when I was a kid. And one of the things that my mother would do that I thought was just so funny and hysterical. Does anybody remember when pantyhose came in like an egg shape container the pantyhose egg i can't remember what brand it was but that was the brand that my mother wore and she would save those giant pantyhose eggs um, and she would fill them with candy that was always part of your easter basket in addition to the little colorful plastic eggs and the you know plastic green grass that got all over the place and Anyhow, I just, and, and she wanted them back. You know, the, yes, it was your Easter basket. You could enjoy it, but she wants her eggs back, including the pantyhose eggs. And they went back into a bag to be reused for next year. And, you know, that was just fine. You know, she was a pioneer in recycling, I guess. Um, but, you know, the, the pantyhose egg, all, always like there was a little bit of money in there you know, uh, a couple of quarters or something like that. And then, you know, a bunch of candy. And she just jam-packed that full. It was great fun. We didn't think anything about it then, but uh, it makes me smile now to think about her using those giant pantyhose eggs. Um, if, if you know what the brand of pantyhose was, or if your mom did the same thing, or if you have done the same thing, let me know down below. But I just, I just thought that was hysterical. And I hadn't thought about it for years until now, so there you go. Get your eggs where you can, I guess. This was something that my dad always made, and he did always use vanilla wafers. But he liked the he liked the vanilla pudding and the banana, the fresh banana together. He thought that the banana pudding mix and the banana together were too much. He also didn't really care for the artificial flavor of the banana, but he liked the vanilla. But this is one of the desserts that my dad used to make. And um, we all loved it. And, yeah, it just makes me think about him. He was a pretty neat guy. Liked, liked to cook, liked to bake. You know, the buyer of pantyhose and feminine hygiene products. God bless him. Anyhow, yeah, so just making a little bit of my dad's banana pudding. And this one is for my baby sister she said she didn't know how to make it so here you go baby sister making so, and we're almost there it, it has not even been 10 minutes here and I can already see my pudding beginning to thicken it's coating the back of the spoon and it should be coming to a boil any time now okay so I'm having to stir a little bit faster I don't want it to scorch on the bottom but I can already see bubbles starting to come up around the edge. Okay. It's really getting thick now. It's getting more difficult to stir. I'm seeing more and more bubbles. We're almost there. And there we go. Let's go ahead and.
vanilla pudding is cooled off. We've got our bananas. We'll go ahead and get them peeled. Um, I am not a fan of this on anything. So I will make extra special sure to make sure that I get all of the, I don't know, banana strings. Maybe that's what you call them. Make sure that you get them off. I find them unappealing. And if I find one, well, you know, that's it for me. I've had enough. Just everybody has their own little quirks and what have you when it comes to food. That one's mine. So I think we've gotten most of our, ban all of our strings off of our banana, hopefully. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this into a couple of sections. And what I have been told, and I'm not sure on the accuracy, is that the little seeds on the inside, that if you take a spoon and just kind of run it down here and get that out, that your banana pudding will not turn and get watery as fast. Boy, this is a lot easier in concept than application. We'll go ahead and do our best to get them because I'd really like it to last more than two days. Day one is good. Day two is okay. But by day three, um, I'm, I'm almost not interested anymore. I'll finish it up because you know I hate waste. But uh, we'll do a little experiment here and see if removing the seeds from the banana really gives you that extra day. With it just being Andrew and I, sometimes we really have to work at a banana pudding. And then I'm just going to give them a little dice up. You can cut your bananas any way you want. You can leave the seeds in. Um, I'm probably going to go ahead and put this in like a smoothie. Like a peanut butter banana smoothie this afternoon. That'll be good. Andrew might want one. We will probably use, oh, I'm guessing like two bananas in here. So I'm going to go ahead and get these seeded, get them chopped up. And of course, if your bananas were smaller, if you did not have, you know, the hearty GMO banana that I have, by all means, um, use as many bananas as you like. Have at it. But I think two is probably going to do us today, at least at our house. So, yay, hooray. Okay, so I'm making my banana pudding in this little dish. That way I can see all of the layers. If you have one of those beautiful um, trifle dishes, this would be a great application to use this that for. Um, so I've got a layer of my Girl Scout cookies here at the bottom, and I'm going to sprinkle over some bananas on top. As many or as few as you want. And I'm going to take some of my vanilla pudding and layer that on the bottom. Covering my bananas. I also think that's part of the secret to keeping your bananas nice is kind of smothering them a little bit with the pudding mixture so that they are not exposed to air. I'll do my best to get those all covered and cover my cookies all in there. So, And of course, as you build your layers, they will all kind of compress. So I'm not terribly worried. I'm not going to be too terribly fussy. But I do want to see if I can get three layers in here of the cookies and the banana and the pudding. Just smashing those all down in there. Probably going to need to use the whole package. That's just fine. I'm not worried. The baby sister will help me eat it. And then let's do another layer of banana. And I 
might do a little extra banana on this, but on this layer, just want every bite to have a little bit of everything in it. And then I'm going to go ahead and put on some more vanilla pudding. This layer all covered and all my bananas smothered. My dad was a very precise man and he loved to make this and he would make it and it would be just right. Every bite had just the same amount of cookie and banana and it looked beautiful and he was a very precise man. So I don't know if I'm that good. But we're we're gonna we're gonna give it a whirl. It'll be delicious no matter even if it's informal, it will still be Like I said, if you have a great custard recipe that you want to use instead of a boxed vanilla pudding, go for it. If all you have is instant pudding, I'm not mad at it. This is a great dessert, and I think this is light and bright and fun. And I honestly think that this is a pretty decent Easter dessert. And it's ready in no time. And you know what? If you're not a baker if you don't have if you enjoy baking but you just don't have time because you're making a ham and you've got no room in the oven this is a really quick easy dessert um, everybody will love it no heating up the kitchen no extra anything it's fairly economical especially if you can get your pudding you know for a dollar under or you make your own custard but with the cost of eggs, I'm not making a custard. I'm not making a custard. I'm saving my I'm saving my eggs for deviled eggs. Okay. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a few more three. Odd numbers are always good, I think. I'm gonna go ahead and give this like three little Girl Scout cookie. Maybe four. Here we go. Maybe four. Anyhow, give those great little Girl Scout cookie embellishments, a little Girl Scout cookie garnish. Yay, Girl Scouts. Make sure I get all my bananas covered here. I've got a couple that are poking out. Okay. All right. All right. And that is going to be my Girl Scout cookie um, banana pudding. Thanks, Dad, for a great recipe. I enjoyed all the ones that you've made me over the years. And I'm going to go ahead and pop this in the refrigerator. And it will set and come to its fullest, thick, its fullest thickness um, in the refrigerator. A handy-dandy little cover. 
And so I'm going to go ahead and put it in the refrigerator. Maybe you make a banana pudding for Easter. Enjoy. They're fun. They're economical. It's light and bright. I think it's one of a perfect Easter dessert. I got these bananas on Saturday in my bountiful basket. I'll go ahead and link the video below so you can take a look at that. But they are really large bananas. Um, easily the size of two regular bananas. And here I go. I find my measuring tape and I'm just going to give it a quick measure. It turns out to be just around nine inches of banana. That's a lot of banana. So we are going to go ahead and cut these into thirds to make our frozen bananas. So I've got two bananas and then I've got some chopsticks. I didn't have any popsicle sticks, but I've got these great chopsticks from my Chinese restaurant and I'm going to use them. They come in all of my deliveries and um, I have a whole collection of them. So not going to buy any popsicle sticks. If I was serving this to smaller children, I probably would go ahead and purchase some popsicle sticks. When we were kids, like my mother was really concerned with pointy cones and stuff like that. There were a lot of us all in a station wagon. You couldn't have a pointy cone. You had to have a safety cone so you didn't poke each other's eye out. This one's got a little boo-boo on it. I'm not sure how much I care. Getting the strings off. That's important though. So here's my, here's my chopstick. And you just kind of want to gently press them to through the bottom towards the middle of the banana without piercing the outside of the banana. I'm going to just go ahead and set these out on a wax paper. And we're going to do about six of them, both bananas. And I'm going to put them in the freezer to get really hard. And they will be delicious. This is a quick, easy treat. Um, super refreshing in the summertime when it's hot. And a nice way to go ahead and just cool off. So, get yeah, frozen banana treat. Yay, hooray. Have all of our bananas pierced now. Here's how they look on the tray. And the wax paper will keep them from sticking in the freezer. Let's go ahead and get them all ready to be frozen. Yay, hooray. I'm going to let these freeze for a minimum of four hours. And there they are by the light of my freezer. Okay, so my bananas have come out of the freezer. And they're pretty hard, pretty solid, pretty frozen. I've been shaking this Magic Shell product up for a few minutes now. And it does say on the lid, shake well. It does separate in here, and we want to make sure that we've got it well incorporated. I'm going to take the lid off, and then I'm going to go ahead and pour it into this jar for dipping. Okay, and we do kind of have to work a little bit fast because we don't want our bananas to start to thaw out. Um, the first couple of bananas I'm gonna do are just gonna be chocolate, just chocolate dipped. So I'm gonna just pull them out and they are nicely coated. I'm gonna let all the drips go back into the glass jar here but that looks nicely coated to me I want some that are just chocolate I'm going to lay them back on our really cool sheet with the wax paper and I'm going to do another one that's just chocolate and just kind of let it drip down And that will start to harden on your frozen banana almost immediately. Looks terrific to me. Okay. Now the next one I'm going to do, I'm going to use some sprinkles. And I think this would be great fun for Easter because they're bright, they're colorful. Also, it's a fruity delight. 
it may be a little bit better than, you know, a 12 inch uh, block of chocolate in the form of an Easter bunny. If you watch how, you know, your children's sugar content and, you know, maybe they get the Easter bunny, but they also get one of these too. So working pretty fast, I'm going to go ahead and just sprinkle my banana yum yum treat with some of these delightful little sprinkles and I think this is fun and festive I think this would be good for any occasion and if you could find like Easter sprinkles that would be you know with Easter bunnies or eggs or something like that that would be especially adorable but this will just be a little bit of hooray at three o'clock in the morning when I am hot and exhausted. I'm gonna do another one with sprinkles, why not? We're gonna live it up. We're gonna use all this chocolate as much as we can. And I have done it in this little jar because um, I am probably not going to wash this. And this was a jar that like some uh, peppers from the dollar store came from. And I am not going to bother in washing this because it is a hot mess and with no reserve whatsoever after I have used as much of the chocolate as I possibly can, I'm going to throw the jar away and I am not going to wash it. So you do whatever you want to do, but that's one reason I see just look at that. Who could resist that? What kid would not be delighted to get something like that? What kid of any age? Now, because I'm a little bit older kid, I'm going to do a couple of more grown-up ones. I love coconut. I'm going to take this sweetened coconut flakes, and I'm going to do my last two like that because I think coconut and banana goes together great. And I like coconut, and I don't care if anybody else does. Uh, you do you whatever you could put nuts on top that would be delicious um, you could um, chopped up macadamia nuts delightful delightful um, Oreo cookies sprinkles of any kind you know all these things but I'm gonna take a little of this shredded sweetened coconut and I am just gonna go ahead and coat this banana with that And that's for the adults because or, or kids that like coconut i don't know any but you know maybe you do i was a kid that liked coconut still am and we are just about done with that entire thing of magic shell i'll tell you why i use the magic shell one because i know it always works it's going to give you the best coating and the best coverage it tastes the best um and that was about $3.99 over at my Albertsons. Um, by the time I buy um, the chocolate melting wafers, by the time I buy those, by the time I buy some coconut oil because I don't have it on hand, um, I've already spent more than $4. So I took the easy way out. If you have those melting wafers, if you have some coconut oil, well then you already have your chocolate topping. You could use white chocolate. I'm sorry, we're having extremely high wind gusts here today. So it's blowing down my, my vent pipe. Okay, there we go. There, there we go, chocolate, chocolate and banana. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to set these back into my freezer. I want them to get really solid. Um, and then I will package them individually. And we will have little chocolate yum yums. Look how sweet those are. Those are so precious. I love those. And it's like four or five bites. You know, it's the, it's the perfect serving size. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in the freezer. Hey, thanks for watching Crazy But Not Dangerous. I'm Shorty Vaughn. I'm so glad to have you with me. Make these for Easter. Make these to cool off during the summertime. 
do what you want to do. Oh, I'm going to get that little piece of coconut back on this one. Um, have a great day. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. It's almost here.